In this video, we are going to talk about skin perfusion pressure, SPP, what it is, what to use it for, and how to carry out this microcirculation measurement using a Periflux 6000 system. You could define SPP as the blood pressure when flow returns to the microcirculation system, or the capillaries if you like, following a control occlusion. You can measure it with a variety of techniques, but today, the most common is laser Doppler because it's non-invasive, it's accurate, and it's easy to perform. To carry out a controlled occlusion, you place a laser Doppler probe on the patient's skin at a place of interest. We'll talk more about probe placement later. This allows the probe to measure the microcirculatory blood flow throughout the exam. Then, you cover the probe with a pressure cuff and inflate it to the point of occlusion. By gradually decreasing the pressure in the cuff, you can identify the point at which blood flow returns. This is your SPP value, which is measured in millimeters of mercury. A functioning microcirculation system is critical for wound healing, and so, SPP is a useful tool for predicting how well an ulcer will heal. It's also useful for assessing the status of microcirculation system. The main advantage of SPP is that it is not affected by vascular calcification. Not all wounds are the same. Some are difficult to assess for patients with amputated toes, for example, toe pressure is not an option. If the patient has edema or calluses, or if the wound is on the sole of the foot, in cases like this, SPP becomes a highly useful alternative to measure microcirculation. So now, let's get back to where you should place the probe. If your patient has an ulcer, for example, we suggest you measure on the angiosomes close to the wound. Clean the site where you want to place the laser Doppler probe with an alcohol swab. When the area is dry, place a double-sided tape strip on the site and position the probe so that the cable hangs down vertically. Place the cuff around the probe so that the probe is in the middle of the cuff. Be sure to select the right cuff for the right size of the limb, as an ill-fitting cuff may affect your readings. And lastly, connect the tubing to the cuff and start the measurement by clicking Inflate. To achieve an accurate SPP measurement, good occlusion is necessary. Here we are running an SPP measurement on a healthy person's toe you can see a baseline perfusion of around 20 units. When you select inflate, the cuff will inflate up to 150 to 200 millimeters of mercury, depending on the value you have set in the system and also the patient's systolic arm pressure. The red line shows the blood perfusion, which drops to almost zero units, and the gray line shows the pressure in the cuff. The software in the system automatically detects when occlusion has occurred. Gray bars will appear under the perfusion curve. The system will automatically start to deflate the cuff at this point. The 2023 update of the IWGDF guidelines it includes an SPP value for wound healing prognosis, stating that values above or equal to 40 millimeters of mercury 
can increase the probability of healing by up to 30%.